Now we're about to unravel the fabric of creativity and stitch together the threads of history. Let's step into a beloved place where hard work is woven seamlessly with tradition. This week's 58 Hometown segment brings us to Cedar Burke. How many towns have a chance to actually see an artist that never been exhibited anywhere else in the country before? My name is Melissa Ralstead. I'm the executive director of the Wisconsin Museum of Quilts and Fiber Arts. The museum is one of the only textile museums in the country, and we are located in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. It's textiles. It's something we all have an affinity for. I mean, we're both wearing textiles. Because of that, it can often get just kind of dismissed, but we have the opportunity to really show people what incredible artwork this really is. We've actually got about 2.2 acres, so we own everything from this building that we're standing in, which is the original 1850s barn, and we've gradually been repurposing the building. So the old blacksmith shop that's on the property has been converted into an artist studio space. The old farmhouse that's on the property has also been converted into an artist studio space. In addition to the exhibitions that we have, we also do a lot in terms of classes and workshops. We have about 40 to 50 classes or workshops a year. It's everything from beginner level. We do a beginning weaving class almost every month up to advanced classes and workshops, but we also have our own collection. So we are a collecting organization and do try to have the work that we collect on exhibit as well. It's intrinsic in who we are and what we do, so it's incredibly important. We're in what used to be a woolen mill. It was built in the 1860s. It was supposedly the biggest woolen mill east of the Mississippi at one time. It was known to have made wool socks for the Chicago White Sox, and some blankets for the Navy and stuff like that. It was a woolen mill until 1969. Steve Danner, general manager of Cedar Creek Winery. Well, you know, we're wine, so we got the good stuff. You know, wine tasting, uh, bottles to sell. We sell wine by the case and wine by the glass. All kinds of wine. We have dry reds. We have sweet wines. We've got some fruit seasonal wines that are fun. People can't get enough of that. The Cedar Creek Winery is one of the anchor stores. The Cedar Creek Settlement. It's a collection of merchants. We've got a shop full of Christmas things on the second floor. There's antiques, there's clothing, all sort of gift things. It's fantastic. What makes Cedarburg a special place is there's an incredible sense of community. Everybody is from here, they're proud to be here. It's big enough that you don't know everybody, but you know people who know people and you're willing to lend a hand. And with the, the shops and the artists that are in town, um, it provides a color and a, a fabric that just makes living here, I think, super fun. We're taking a look at the Interurban Trail, which runs right through the heart of downtown Cedarburg, and it has quite an interesting history. I'm here with Andrew Strzok from Ozaki County, and how did this trail get started? Yeah, uh, really a fascinating history, Nelly. It, um, it started in actually 1908 or the early 1900s. This used to be the electric interurban rail line and it used to take people from Milwaukee all the way up to Sheboygan on the rail line. That ran until about the late 1940s or 1950s when the rail line was abandoned. And um, We Energies uh, took over the property in the early 70s. We started working with them to slowly convert that to the interurban trail that you see today. In Ozaki County, it's 30 miles, but you can actually connect up to the trail in Milwaukee County. It's part of their Oak Leaf Trail system. And you can also connect on the northern end of Ozaki in Sheboygan County. The nice thing about the Interim Trail is it is paved, so all 30 miles are paved. So we get groups of inline skaters because they can use it. Um, of course, bikers, hikers, dog walkers, um, anything you can imagine. Here on the bridges, we even get people fishing and stuff off the off the side of, uh, of the trail. So the uh, trail is known as a Great Wisconsin Birding and Nature Trail also. So there's a lot of place to enjoy nature. Location is everything. Cedarburg is so like fun and walkable and like we have a product that you can either take home or you can have it sliced, walk around Cedarburg. My name is Nicole Dickman. I'm a chocolatier here at Amy's Candy Kitchen in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. We are definitely known for our gourmet jumbo caramel apples. We have all different varieties. The caramel we do here is fresh every day, small batches, just five simple ingredients, delicious. With our caramels, we do obviously the caramel apples, pecan and cashew turtles, caramels like sea salt caramels, plain caramels, very famous for those. We make things in-house like our toffee, fairy food or sponge candy. We're known for our fudge too, state fair 
blue ribbon Winnie and fudge. But yeah, pretty much everything like you see here, we hand dip with all imported Belgian chocolate, really high quality, delicious. You can definitely taste the difference. And yeah, it doesn't hurt that we pipe the smell out to the streets. So, you know, if you're even just in Cedarburg, you know that Amy is, is here. And it is definitely a destination in Cedarburg. It is the reason a lot of people come to Cedarburg.